Welcome to this video where we'll dive into the fascinating world of React Agents. But what exactly is a React Agent and why should you care? Imagine this, a React Agent is like a super smart problem solver that can handle really complicated tasks. But here's the cool part. It doesn't try to solve everything at once. Instead, it breaks the big task into smaller, simpler steps and tackles them one by one. And the best part? It knows exactly which tools to use for each step. Here's how it works. Uh, the React agent has access to a collection of tools. Each tool is designed to do something specific, like answering a question, performing a calculation, or looking up information. When you give the agent a task, it first analyzes the problem and decides which tool is the best fit to start with. It's like... Now, once that tool does its job and gives an output, the React agent doesn't just stop there. It takes that output, looks at it, and asks itself, okay, what's next? Do I need to use another tool to move forward? If yes, it picks the next tool, feeds the new input, and continues the process. This cycle repeats until the entire task is completed. For example, let's say you ask the agent to create a detailed report. Here's what it might do. First, it uses one tool to collect raw data. Then it switches to another tool to analyze that data and pull out meaningful insights. Finally, it calls a third tool to format everything into a polished report. <laughs> What's really amazing is how seamless this process is. The agent doesn't try to do everything at once. It simplifies the workflow step-by-step, step, making sure each tool is used at the right time and in the right way. This ability to break down complex problems and handle them efficiently is what makes React Agent so powerful. Whether it's building a chatbot, analyzing data, or automating workflows, React Agents are designed to make intelligent decisions and get the job done with precision. All right, now that we understand what a React Agent is, let's get started by setting up our environment. The first step in any AI project is to create a clean and organized workspace where we can install all the necessary libraries without messing up our system's main setup. And for that, we're gonna use Conda. First, open your terminal or command prompt. If you have Anaconda or Miniconda installed, you're good to go. If not, you can download Miniconda. It's lightweight and perfect for tasks like this. Now, let's create our Conda environment. Type this command. Conda create hyphen n React Agent Python 3.10. Here, React Agent is the name of our environment and we're specifying that we want Python version 3.10. You can name your environment whatever you like, but make sure it's something meaningful. <laughs> Once you hit enter, Conda will ask for confirmation. Type Y and press enter again. Conda will now create the environment and install the base packages. This might take a minute, so let it do its thing. Great, our environment is ready. Now let's activate it. Type Conda activate react agent. You'll notice that the prompt changes to show the name of your environment, which confirms that it's active. Now it's time to install the libraries we'll need for our React agent. For this React agent, we'll be using several libraries. Langchain Grok and Langchain Community for managing and building our agent's logic. Langler and Langchain Core for advanced graph-based workflows. Titantic for data validation and settings management. Finance for fetching financial data. Python.env for securely managing environment variables like API keys. All right, let's, let's quickly go through this code. First, we import chat grok from the langchain grok library. Then we create an instance of chat grok called LLM. Here's what's happening. Model underscore name equals gamut 29 bit specifies the model we're using, a powerful language model. API key equals grok API key is where we pass our API key to authenticate with Grok. Max tokens equals 20, 48 sets the maximum number of tokens or text chunks the model can generate in a response. Let's move on to the next part. Now, let's use our LLM to actually generate a response. Here, we're calling LLM.invokeHigh. 
This sends the input high to the model and the model will respond based on its training. Now, let's break down some important imports we'll be using to build our React agent. These libraries and tools are essential for integrating various functionalities into our agent. First, we import Tavali search results from Langchain Community Tools Tavali Search. This tool allows our agent to perform searches and retrieve results from Tavali, a tool that helps us fetch relevant information from external sources. Next, we import some components from Langgraph.graph. Uh, <clears throat> messages state and state graph are used to manage the flow of messages and states in our agent. And and start are markers to define the beginning and end of a state in the graph, helping us structure the conversation flow. We also import human message and system message from Langchain core messages. These are used to differentiate between messages from the user and messages from the system. The tool from Langchain Core Tools is a decorator that helps us define and register tools that our agent can use to perform specific tasks. Next, we have MySect and Field from Pydantic. These help us define structured data models and validate inputs, ensuring that the data we work with is clean and accurate. We also import Tool Node and Tools Condition from Langgraph Prebuilt. Tool Node is used to define the nodes in our graph. Uh, and tools underscore condition helps us set conditions for when certain tools should be used based on the agent's current state. <laughs> this line of code initializes the Tavali search results tool, assigning it to the Tavali tool variable. This allows our agent to use the Tavali search functionality to fetch relevant search results from the Tavali API. So we're using a total of three tools in our React agent, a simple calculator, a stock price getter, and a web search tool. Let's focus on the web search tool first. Here, we've defined a function called web search with the tool decorator, which tells our agent that this is a tool it can use. The purpose of this tool is to perform a web search to find the required information. Uh, Inside the function, we use tabli tool.invoke query to send the search query to the tabli search tool. This invokes the search and gets the response. Finally, the function returns the response, which contains the search results from the web. Now let's take a look at our second tool, which fetches stock prices using Yahoo Finance. We're using the Y Finance library for this. Here we've defined the get stock price function with the tool decorator, indicating that it's another tool our agent can use. Finally, let's look at our third tool, which is a simple calculator that can perform basic arithmetic operations. This function is also decorated with tool, making it accessible to our agent. Now we're putting everything together. In this line, we're creating a list called tools that contains all three of our tools, web search, get stock price, and calculator. <laughs> this list allows our agent to access and use any of these tools when needed. The tool node essentially organizes these tools and helps the agent decide which one to use based on the task at hand. This makes the agent more dynamic and responsive as it can select the right tool for the job. Now you might be wondering, how does the agent know which tool to call from the tool node? Well, that's where the descriptions we've written for each tool come into play. If you remember for each tool we've provided a description that explains its purpose. For example, the web underscore search tool is for performing web searches. The get stock price tool is for fetching stock prices and the calculator tool handles arithmetic operations. These descriptions act as a guide for the model to understand which tool to use based on the task it needs to perform. By binding the tools to the LLM, we're essentially telling the agent that it has access to these tools and can call them during its decision-making process. This step makes the tools functional and ready to be used by the agent whenever it's performing tasks. Now let's take a look at how we're setting up the system message and the reasoner function. First, we define the system message. This message sets the behavior of the assistant. It tells the agent that it's a helpful assistant that can use the web search tool, provide stock prices, and perform arithmetic operations. Next, we have the reasoner function. This function takes the current state of the conversation, messages state, and passes it to the language model along with the system message. 
The model processes this and returns a response, which is then used to update the state. The reasoner is essentially guiding the agent to think and respond based on the context of the conversation using the tools available. Let's dive into how we're setting up the workflow and using the tool conditions in this part of the code. First, we create a state graph called workflow, which manages the flow of the conversation and decision making. This graph helps the agent follow a series of steps based on the current state. This adds the reasoner function as a node in the workflow. The reasoner is responsible for making decisions and generating responses based on the current state. Here, we add the tools underscore node, which contains all the tools the agent can use as another node in the workflow. Now, let's talk about the edges. This sets up the first step in the workflow where the process starts with the reasoner node. This establishes that after using the tools, the workflow should return to the reasoner to process the next steps. Here's where the tools condition comes into play. This line is crucial. It adds a conditional edge between the reasoner and the tools node. The tools condition is a function that checks whether the agent needs to use a tool based on the current state. If the condition is met, the workflow moves to the tools node where the agent uses the appropriate tool. Afterward, the process returns to the reasoner for further decision making. Finally, we have the line react graph equals workflow compile. This is where we compile the entire workflow into a working graph that can be executed. When we call workflow compile, it takes all the nodes, edges, and conditional logic we've set up, like the reasoner and tools nodes, as well as the conditions for when to use a tool and turns them into a functional workflow. This compiled graph is what the agent will actually use to process inputs, decide which tools to use, and generate responses. Okay, so we've completed our React AI agent, and now it's time to check how the agent responds to a question. Here's our first question. We're passing this question as a human message to the agent. The message asks, what is Elon Musk's age 100? <laughs> the agent will first understand that the question involves both a web search for Elon Musk's age and some arithmetic to add 100 to it. Uh, so the agent will use the web underscore search tool to find Elon Musk's age, then use the calculator tool to add 100 to it, and finally return the result. Ouch, Lava. Let's look at our second question. Since the question is about a stock price, the agent will use the get underscore stock underscore price tool to fetch the current price of Tesla's stock from Yahoo Finance. All right, that wraps up our tutorial on building a React AI agent. We've walked through everything from setting up the environment, installing the necessary libraries, coding the tools, to integrating them into the agent's workflow. Then, we tested it with a couple of questions to see how it responds. I'll be sharing this notebook with you all, and you can find the link to it in the description below.